All right, everybody, thank you for staying on for the new Junior Ambassador Orientation. And welcome to our program. I'm so excited that you all decided to stick around and stay uh, for this briefing and join us for this new and exciting year and program. To get started, uh, just once more, if you joined us a little bit later than our introduction, my name is Julie Eller, and I am the manager of grassroots advocacy for the Arthritis Foundation. It's my job to help you share your story. And it's important to me because I myself have gotten to share my own arthritis story through this program. I've had JA since I was seven years old, and I am so thankful to be here today and able to help you start to take this journey in owning your story and sharing it with the world. So let's get started. You might not know what advocacy means, in the way that we're talking about it right now. But you definitely already engage in advocacy without even knowing it. I'm sure that in the past you've asked your parents to stay up past bedtime and you've lobbied them pretty hard and said, please, can I? And they say, yes, absolutely, do your thing. Or maybe a more realistic one is that you've asked for an extension on a homework assignment and gotten it. Or stayed out past curfew. Um, Everybody is an advocate for something. And while these things are kind of silly and uh, small day to day, what they require is that you share your story. You say, hey, we should do this thing and this is why. And you share a compelling argument and people agree with you and they say, yes, let's do it. Well, that's something that we can do for the arthritis community. That's why we're so glad that you chose to advocate for arthritis. We're gonna be able to share our stories, provide compelling reasons for people to make policy changes to impact our whole arthritis community. How many times have you heard the phrase, I didn't know that kids could have arthritis. I have heard it throughout my life endless, endless times. I still hear it today, and I'm a young adult. But how do we change that? Beyond just the micro, yeah, kids get arthritis too, how do we change that reaction? How do we teach people that kids really do get arthritis too? Well, we have to share our stories, and we have to do so now, while people still look at us and say, okay, I get it. You're a kid. You have arthritis. I believe you. Well, we can say what arthritis feels like. We can say what it means when our sibling gets, is flaring and, and what that looks like and how that impacts your life. We can tell people that there are things that we have to do differently because of how arthritis affects you or your family that other kids might not know about. We have the power to share our day-to-day -day arthritis realities and change minds and open eyes and teach people that they shouldn't be surprised to hear that kids get arthritis too, but rather compelled to make a difference and find a cure. So as people whose families are touched by arthritis, we are the experts. We know this disease inside and out, day in and day out. If we don't tell our stories, who will? We have the power to make the change because we are living the experience. So we're gonna play a video here. It's one of my favorite videos and it teaches a, how, it teaches civics education in a really fun way. I remember watching this when I was in high school and realizing that one, this song is catchy and it would be stuck in my head for the rest of my life, but two, it's a really great way to understand our civics process. So again, I'm pulling up the YouTube. It's a schoolhouse rock video extraordinaire. And here we go. Just a bit. Woo, you sure got to climb a lot of steps to get to this Capitol building here in Washington. But I wonder who that sad little scrap of paper is. I'm just a bill, yes, I'm only a bill, and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's 
It's a long, long journey to the capital city. It's a long, long wait while I'm sitting in committee. But I know I'll be a law someday. At least I hope I pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience and courage. Well, I got this far. When I started, I wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they wanted a law passed, so they called their local congressman, and he said, you're right, there ought to be a law. And he sat down and wrote me out and introduced me to Congress, and I became a bill. And I'll remain a bill until they decide to make me a law. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee, and I'll sit here and wait. While a few key congressmen discuss a debate whether they should let me be or oh, how I hope and pray that they will. But today I am still just a bill. Listen to those congressmen arguing. Is all that discussion and debate about you? Yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones. Most bills never even get this far. I hope they decide to report on me favorably, otherwise I may die. Die? Yeah, die in committee. So, but it looks like I'm going to live. Now I go to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. If they vote, yes, what happened? Then I go to the Senate and the whole thing starts all over again. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And if they vote for me on Capitol Hill, well, then I'm off to the White House where I wait in our line with a lot of bills for the president to sign. And if he signs me, then I'll be your oh, all. I hope and pray that he will. But today I am still just a bill. You mean even if the whole conversation should be a law, the president can still say no? Yes, that's called a veto. The president vetoes me. I have to go back to Congress, and they vote on me again, and by that time, it's over. By that time, it's very unlikely that you become a law. It's not easy to become a law, is it? No. But now I hope and pray that I will. But today, I'm still just a bill. He signed your bill. Now you're a law. Oh, yeah. So that is our Schoolhouse Rock video, <laughs> and I will be singing it for the rest of the evening. Um, I'm just going to get back into our PowerPoint here. So the key takeaways here. Oh, sorry. I think I have an autoplay going on. There we go. All right. Now we're getting back into our, our PowerPoint. So our key takeaways from this video is a better understanding or a refresher course on how a bill becomes a law. So first, we have a group of citizens and they share their story. A group of people like me and you who say, hey, we've got something to tell you about. And the more they share, the more their idea catches like wildfire. And eventually, the idea turns into the bill. Someone writes it and it's introduced to Congress. Once introduced, It'll be introduced in either the House or the Senate. And in that House, it'll go to committee. And then, if it passes out of committee, it'll go to a full vote. After that point, it'll have to go to the other side of the Congress, go back into committee, and go to a full vote once more. After that's happened, the bill will go to the White House for the president. And the president has a choice. He, can, he or she can either sign the bill and pass it into law or veto and prevent the bill from becoming a law. In this situation, I'm optimistic and I'm saying that the president will sign and the bill will become a law, yay! This process has power. And the reason this process has power is because we are able to be a part of it every step of the way. So yes, the idea originates with us. It originates with a shared concern that we might have. And then we encourage this idea to become a bill. We encourage it to get written on paper. And in doing so, we must communicate our story tenfold. Because once a bill is written in, 
it becomes kind of jargony and lawyer speak. And when we have it in that way, sometimes it loses the human face of it all. But we have the power to share our story to our members of Congress, to our committees in Congress, to the other half of Congress, be it the Senate or the House, and continue to raise our voices and make sure that that bill communicates our story so that when it's passed, it can really make a big difference for people with arthritis. Now, as we move forward, it's important that we continue to tell our stories. So how do we want to do it? Well, first, it's important that we're honest. We just want to answer the question, how is our life affected by arthritis? How is our life affected by a particular law that makes it trickier to access our medication? What happens when I can't access my medication? We want to be able to say and put the human face behind the policy. So when something happens, what's the result for our family? We want to share our stories and answer these questions in a memorable and succinct way. So succinct, in fact, that we want to be able to say it in sometimes 140 characters or less so it can be shared on Twitter or on other forms of social media. We want to be able to share these stories and share these moments as much as possible to amplify the voice of our whole community. Because when we share our individual pieces, we can really make our arthritis voice loud for everyone to hear. So we can do it through email. We can do it through social media. We can do it by sharing uh, pictures on Instagram. We can do it by attending a parade in your home state where you know an elected official might be and wearing your Champion of Yes t-shirt. We can do it by making sure that our friends and family join our Jingle Bell Run team or join our walks to cure arthritis or by making sure that at these events we have opportunities to talk about advocacy. We can do this by inviting our friends to become junior ambassadors. There are so many ways to tell our stories and make a difference. We're so excited to have you in our program so that we can make it happen throughout the rest of our lives. So here are some examples of some memorable and succinct sentences that can really help share your arthritis story in two sentences or less. The first one is, it takes our family two hours to get to our doctor. My mom has to take a day off from work and me and my sister both miss school. That's a reality for me or it was my whole life when I was growing up. I had to take off school, my mom had to take off work and it would take so long to get to our doctor. I didn't realize that that was the human face on the pediatric rheumatology shortage story. Here's another one. My medications allow me to walk. Now this is a classic human story that can really promote the real life effects of our forget. And when we share things like this that are genuine and from the heart, people can understand their arthritis and empathize with arthritis and maybe in ways that they couldn't before. This last one, paying for my treatment is like paying for my future college tuition. Now that's one that resonates with me. <laughs> um, but it, it speaks to accessing our medications and making sure that they are affordable and that our out-of-pocket costs aren't sky high. Now, sometimes these sentences make more sense to us, we'll see. But it's important that we look at our experiences with arthritis and think about how we can summarize them to share some of those now, all of these sentences can be used to share our stories. And throughout this year, as junior ambassadors, we'll help you cultivate the tools and the skills to make sure that sharing these stories is possible and easy. The first step is joining our program. The next step is sharing your story. 
and we'll be able to do it in, in a way that's easy and approachable for you. So maybe you're not ready to stand up on stage and give a speech, but taking the first steps, sending an email to an elected official, or even just sharing your story with a friend, these are things that we do to advocate for arthritis and things that you'll feel more and more comfortable doing throughout this year. So as we said before, I stole this slide from our first presentation today. What's next on our plate? Well, we'll send emails to our elected officials. That's our starting point. We will tune in to our junior ambassador briefing. Our next one's on December 12th. We'll attend Jingle Bell Runs if they are available in our area. And we'll look out for our November Junior Ambassador Newsletter. Apply for a scholarship to attend the Platinum Ambassador Fly-In and find new ways to share our stories. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to open it up again once more for questions. You're able to hit pound six and unmute your line to ask away, or you can use the chat feature to do the same. So what would happen if the bill was passed? Like, what would the foundation do next? That is a great question. So right now, we're evaluating some of the ways that we can take action next. So what happens after a bill is passed is that the state, if it's a state bill, they have some time to implement the law. And we have a number of bills that have been passed in the past year that will become enacted or, or go into effect this year. Most of those bills are on step therapy, um, which is a process by insurers that sometimes prevents um, people from accessing their medications when they need to. So what we're doing as a foundation is, is identifying some implementation tools. So we're gonna have webinars for people who live in states where state laws will be implemented and let them know that they have these new rights. We have, we have new laws that are going to protect them in, in this new way. And we're going to help them make sure that the laws are implemented the right way, providing them with feedback mechanisms so that they can let us know if they don't think something is going in the right way so that we can bring into action and help them make sure. Um, and to help them uh, really see the life benefits of what this law does. So first piece is implementation, and the next piece is helping our communities feel strong and strengthened and able uh, to make sure that the bill is working for them. And the next step is making sure or identifying that next piece, that next barrier that we can break down in that state that would help further strengthen um, our access. Yeah. And what if it was vetoed? And what if it was vetoed? That's a good question. So let's say we have a bill that's vetoed that we work really, really hard at, to advocate for. If the bill is vetoed, often that means that we're going to double down. We're going to work harder and harder and harder to make sure that we have a second chance to give this bill life. Maybe that means evaluating why the bill was vetoed, why the bill didn't pass. And maybe that means looking at those individual pieces and making sure that the bill is reflective so that we can change the pieces that um, prevented it from passing while protecting the rights and it so that we can identify new places to make sure that it will be the most effective it can be. And then we'll start the process again. We'll share our stories. We'll explain why we were heartbroken that the bill was vetoed at first. And we'll continue going to work and sharing our story until we see that access to care barrier broken down or we see a victory for people with arthritis. And how many kids are in the program right now? They're in the program right now. 
That's a good question too. That's a good uh -huh. question right now. Right now, we have about right now we have about fifty people in the program. In the program. Um, I'm getting some feedback. So I'm um, sorry, I'm, I'm pausing a little. Feedback. I'm sorry, I'm pausing a little. But we're hoping to grow our numbers yeah, throughout the year. Our numbers throughout the year. Um, and um, and. How can we learn about what laws or bills are affecting us? Great question. So right now, our state advocacy leaders um, are working to provide details on what's going on in your state so you can learn exactly about what laws are affecting you um, and where you can take action. These emails are going to be prepared and sent out to all of our ambassadors, our junior ambassadors, and our advocates um, in December of this year. And as we send those out, I'll make sure that you guys have access to all of those pieces. Um, so that's one, one part. <laughs> Another part is reaching out directly to your advocacy leadership team member who can provide you with some more details about what's going on in your state and how to get involved. I'll send out our map of each of the states and who's covering them and their contact information along with this slide deck uh, tomorrow. And the last way to do it is by going, I'm going to share my screen a bit more. Um, excuse me for one second. I'm going to get our website. And if you go, So arthritis.org, you can click on this Fighting for You Advocacy tab. And then you would go to our legislative position statements. And this is a lot of position statements. But these are what these are the, the things that are happening in the state and those that we're advocating for. The other thing you can look at is in our policy priorities. He has outlined some of our federal policy priorities. So if you go to Access to Care, you can see that our pediatric rheumatology shortage is on this list. And when you click this open, there's some more details on what the shortage looks like. We've got our map, and we've got an opportunity to take action. Here you can see that we have a call script available. So if you wanted to communicate with your elected officials, you could do so just through there. So those are some of our resources. Um, and if you have more questions about how to get involved and how to act, um, you can reach out to me and you can reach out to your advocacy leadership state director. Um, and I, again, I'll provide that contact information for all of those folks in our uh, conclusion email tomorrow. I'm just checking out our chat to see if anybody has questions there. All right, I'm not seeing any. So I think that covers our question session. Um, if you have more questions, uh, let me see them real quick. Okay, I've got two more. <laughs> okay, never mind. I have one more. This presentation will be posted after the call on our YouTube page and also on our website. So right now, something I'm working hard to do is create some edits on our website that make it a little bit more action friendly. And we're going to host all of our videos in the future on this Advocate Webinar Series page. We're gonna rename this, I realize I'm telling you guys a lot of these here, but we're gonna rename this our Video Training Center and we're gonna have our junior ambassador videos listed here along with our advocate videos and our ambassador videos. Um, so we'll post this here and also to our YouTube account. Um, if we go to YouTube, you'll see these 
arthritis foundation. We're going to click here. And if you scroll to the bottom, first off, you'll see the uploads appear right here. So you'll be able to click in really quick. And then if you look at our playlist, we have a whole playlist of advocacy webinars. You'll be able to click in here and see our junior ambassador webinar come up next. These are all things that are really, we're getting the groundwork laid. So as we move forward through the year, we'll have more and more opportunities to see these things in action. And it'll become more routine for all of us to know where they live and how to access them on our website. All right, let's see, is there any other questions before we sign off? I don't think so. Okay, everyone. Well, this has been an awesome junior ambassador orientation. You guys have some great questions, and I really appreciate your taking the time to be on the call with us today. One more time, my contact information is right here. So if you have questions, or if you want to give me a call and chat, or if you want to follow me or tweet me, all of that information is here. Um, I'll have recordings for both the orientation and our um, October recording available as soon as possible. Um, I'll send them off to our marketing communication team now to have them posted on our website. Um, until we talk again, uh, have a, a great 